Um, so I'm Joe Barrett and I work in the product team at Open Knowledge International. Um, and today I'm going to talk about CCAN, which is an open source platform for publishing data online. So I've worked with, several, with CCAN for several years, working with governments and other institutions to help them set up and customise their portals. So I'm going to talk a little bit about CCAN, what it is, and then also how our work with CCAN has informed some of the work we're moving on to now. Uh, so first, a few quick facts about CCAN. So it's a data management software uh, for publishing data online, and it powers many um, open data portals around the world. So it's completely open source, uh, both the core libraries and all the extensions, um, and it's got a large and vibrant community around it of publishers and developers um, working under the leadership of the CCAN Association, of which Open Knowledge International uh, are members. So it's got a strong emphasis on being ex uh, extendable and customizable, um, and it's really easy to integrate it, integrate with it via the API. Um, so CCAN is widely used across the world um, on portals ranging from the um, national open data portals in the UK, in the US, uh, Brazil, Canada, um, but also uh, smaller portals. Um, for example, we've worked on um, Glasgow City Council, I and mean, it's also not, not by us, but also it's used on the London data store. Um, so there are hundreds of sites running around the world, and um, we've lost count of them. Oh. Uh, so CCAN has the objective of being um, useful at both ends of the data publishing um, process. So on the one hand, making it easy for people to find data that's relevant and useful to them um, and access it so they can use it for their own needs. Um, and at, at the same time, it's providing tools to make it easier for publishers to streamline data publishing um, and integrate it into their existing workflows. Um, in terms of making it easy to find data, uh, we take great care in providing an intuitive and clear interface um, with full text search um, that can be further refined by searching by location, format, license, etc. Um, datasets can be browsed by uh, organization or group or specific keywords. Um, so here is an example of a fairly standard page and you can see the um, results on the right hand side column and the filters on the left um, to help you drill down into the results. So these can be searched by various different things including format, publisher, keyword, tag, etc. So the data set pages, this is this one on the right, um, provide a context for that data. So here, uh, all the metadata is accessible, um, and there's information about provenance of that data, the revision history of the metadata, um, as well as links to the different formats, information about licenses, etc. Um, and also here, for, for, for data formats that are suitable, um, we have previews that allow users to have a look at what that data is. And here is another example of that. Um, for some formats, um, there are extensions that allow um, for previewing of special types of, for example, spatial data. Um, so for publishers, CCAM provides an easy way to add or edit metadata. The whole process can be um, tweaked to adapt to existing workflows um, and there are extension points to plug into existing authorization providers. And th there are tools and dashboards to help in the maintaining of a catalog um, like checkers or counts for downloads and views. Um, here's a screenshot of the default form for entering a new, new data set metadata. So it's a two-step process um, where you first enter the metadata itself, um, things like the title and the description of that data set, keywords, license, what organization it belongs to, and then you describe and upload the actual data files. So all this can be really easily customized depending on the needs of the publisher, um, from the schema that's used uh, for the metadata fields to the number of stages you want to go through, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Further to that, uh, once the data sets are published, there are tools for helping publishers to manage them. So for example, you can publish data sets in bulk or you can delete them in bulk. Um, and there are extensions available to check the quality of the links, um, for tracking the visitors to the site, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, so a particularly popular feature is the harvesting extension, which allows you to uh, register sources for different catalog protocols and formats and import their uh, metadata directly into CCAM. Um, so it basically allows you to um, set up jobs to import the metadata and shows reports about validation errors, um, data sets added, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, finally, on the CCAN side, one of the most important goals of CCAN is to make it as developer-friendly as possible. Um, so whether they are building on top of CCAN using the API or extending CCAN itself, um, using the extension points in order to customize whatever instance it, it, it is that's being worked on. So in most cases, this involves something as simple as changing the metadata schema or changing the look and the feel of the site. Um, but there are extension hooks at all points of the stack to allow customizations to almost any part of CCAN. So these, these extensions are maintained by the community and add like a wide variety of different features. So here are a few of the popular ones. Um, the scheming extension allows you to easily define and custom add custom metadata schemas in JSON. So publishers can add or remove fields, add custom validation, controlled vocabulary, LEs, etc. cetera. Um, there's other extensions covering things from like integration with authorization systems to indexing the textual data on a PDF, um, adding different types of visualization, um, et cetera. So you can, I don't think I have a link, but you can um, browse the available extensions at extensions.ccan.org. Um, and I'll quickly just mention some places where you can go to learn a little bit more about CCAN. Um, for a general overview, you can go to ccan.org, um, which has got information about features, support, anything else you would need. Um, there's comprehensive documentation at docs.ccan.org, um, and, so, and you can also go there and find different ways of engaging with the community and the various ways to get support. Um, Thank you. Um, so our work on CCAN over the last several years um, has, has, has led us to understand a lot about how people are working with data and what the barriers to opening that data and making it useful are. So we have found that this area on the right is something that in, in the product team least is not something we've been concentrating on and it's a, it's a battle that we find has been in, we, it's been won, if you like. So what CCAN starts to do is look at some of these problems on the left. And uh, we've been developing these, these ideas, and this has led to what we're doing at the moment, which is building a set of lightweight specifications and tools to make it easier for people to work with data. Um, and we call this frictionless data. So it's about removing the friction in working with data. Um, and as I said, we've no, we've, we're developing a set of tools, specifications, and best practices for processing, describing, and publishing data. Now, at the heart of this is something we call the, the data package, which is a containerization format, um, which is starting to emerge as best practice um, for publishing uh, data. So we want to introduce a significant measurable improvement to how data is being shared. Um, so we've already built support for data packages into CCAM, um, but our approach is to make it compatible with however you want to use your data. So here's an example of some of the integrations that we've got at the moment, and we're building libraries in Python, uh, Ruby, Clojure, PHP, R, Java, and we've just started a Julia, work on a Julia set of libraries as well. Uh, and we're also developing some standalone tools, which is a big part of what we're doing. So Good Tables, this is an example of goodtables.io, is a data validation service. Um, so you can hook in any data source, um, and it'll provide a range of checks to the quality of that data. So for example, this is now, uh, can be fit into a into sort of data processing pipeline within CCAN, so as you upload, a data set to CCAN, it'll automatically give you a series of checks 
um, and eventually you'll be able to potentially even uh, make changes to that data before it's published. Um, okay, uh, so if you want to find out more about any of these, then come speak to me, and thank you very much. That's the end of my talk. <laughs>